I'm Dustin, this is your week 10 waiver wire. Another fantasy football week in the books, which means we got plenty to talk about. If you wanna see the write up and see the full list, click on the link in the description. It'll take you to the write up on the website. So let's talk about the running backs. We'll start with Tampa Bay. Another one down for them, Anton Smith. He's out for the year. The only one left is Peyton Barber as of now. We'll see if Doug Martin can return. We'll see if Jacquez Rogers can, can return. But if not, Barber's gonna be the only one left. They got Mike James out there as well, but Barber's gonna be the guy that they go to. Kind of a tough matchup against the Bears, but he could be a volume play if he gets a chance to start. Rob Kelly, got to talk about him out there as Washington. I still think Matt Jones is the best running back out there, but so much about staying out on the field is having the coaching staff's trust. And that's not really what Matt Jones has right now. So Kelly has a chance to win this job. If he, he's gonna get a chance to, to be the featured back, I think he will be the first one to get the touches week 10, but they got a tough matchup going up against Minnesota, so we'll see how that goes. But Kelly, I think he should be out in all leagues just until this one gets figured out. Capri Bibbs with Denver. This one's very interesting. I mean, Booker seemed to be a guy that was going to blossom with his opportunity. He was playing really well before C.J. Anderson got hurt. But since he's been the featured back, he hasn't been that good. Now, granted, you know, the Denver offense in general wasn't very good week nine, but Bibbs was really the only highlight. They've already said he's going to get more touches. There's some reports saying that Bibbs might actually be the starter. I don't think that's necessarily going to happen. I think we're going to need to see more out of Bibbs before we get to that point. But he should be owned in, in pretty much all leagues at this point just until we see what happens because whoever that, whoever the running back on Denver who's getting majority of the carries is going to have value and there's a chance Bibbs could be that guy. So I think for now he's pretty much an ad in all leagues just until we see how that one gets figured out. Dejuan Harris for San Francisco. The guy played amazing, but you got to consider a few things here. Obviously, Carlos Hyde was out. That's why I got to start. He was playing against New Orleans, so not really the toughest defense to, to play against. Now, Harris did look good. I do think he's, at this point, a high upside handcuff to Hyde, but don't go too crazy getting this guy on your team. He, you know, Hyde will more than likely be back, but who knows? I mean, pay, pay close attention to the reports. Right now, I'm just calling Harris an, an ad in deeper leagues but he could get a chance to start. Maybe one more game, we'll see how Hyde does, but as long as Hyde's healthy, Harris is nothing more than a handcuff, so don't go too crazy over, over picking him up. Paul Perkins, another guy that's interesting. More than likely, it's just gonna be a mess out there with Jennings. I don't think Jennings is gonna go away for the Giants, but Perkins is starting to be involved a little bit more, and at this point, you know, I think he's worthy of, of just kind of a an upside guy to add to your bench. If Jennings does get knocked out of the way, there's a chance Perkins could get enough weekly touches to have value, but Perkins does have some big play potential, but he's just, I don't really see him as a workhorse every down back, but he does have some upside and he is starting to get more touches. And with all the running back craziness out there, sometimes you gotta take what you can get and he could be serviceable at times. Ronnie Hillman, I wanna talk about him with Minnesota. It's a mess out there. McKinnon can't get things going. Asiata can't get things going. Now they got Hillman, who's had success in the past. He had success on Denver. He might start get, if he ends up being the most productive guy out there, they might start going away from McKinnon and Asiata and get Hillman a little bit more involved. So it's interesting. Don't go crazy, but I do think he's worth adding to benches and deeper leagues until we see what happens. Thomas Rawls, I want to talk about him. It's time to pick him up if you want to be the guy that owns him. He's only, he's only owned about 40% of leagues right now. Obviously, Michael's been solid, but I don't necessarily think he's been so good that Rawls can't come back in and carve a role. Procise is still in the mix. Surprise, surprise, we have another running back mess, three-headed monster once Rawls comes back. But you know, we'll see what happens tonight in the game with Seattle. You know, Michael might solidify his role and, and you know, maybe make it even harder for Rawls to have a role come week 11. But, I still think Rawls has an upside, and I still think the coaching staff likes Rawls the most. I think they trust him the most, so keep an eye on Rawls. I would pick him up if you want to be the one that owns him. Let's move the receiver. Eli Rogers I want to talk about. He's only on 5% of leagues. He got a lot of his yards during kind of junk time when they were playing from behind towards the end of the game, but still, I think he could be the one that kind of emerges as the wide receiver two out there. You know, Hayward Bay's banged up now. 
and uh, you know Wheaton's out of the way. Sammy Coates seems to be more of a hit or miss type guy. I think Rogers could be the guy that has potential consistent value. So I, I do think he's worth looking at in in, uh, in deeper leagues. Richard Matthews, we need to start giving this guy a little bit more respect. Two more touchdowns week nine. Mariota's starting to find this guy and love this guy. He's clearly the, the best option in terms of receivers out there with Tennessee. So Matthews, we need to start giving this guy some more love, especially in standard leagues with how many, how many uh, touchdowns this guy's been catching lately. And then J.J. Nelson's the last receiver I want to talk about. He's borderline must-add in all leagues for me. I'll call him deeper leagues just because... <sighs> That Arizona offense, you got to think they're going to get their passing game going at some point. Nelson might be the spark that they needed. I mean, they were tried so hard to get Floyd to work out this year, but he just could not do it. He was dropping passes. He just was not doing what that offense needed him to do. And now Nelson's going to move in there, and he could be the spark that they needed. You know there's still passing yards to go around out there. You know they're going to get it going at some point. And Nelson could be huge down the stretch. He's very interesting to me. I think he has a huge upside. He's still a gamble, but he has a huge upside. Needs to be owned in more leagues. Pick up and play quarterback, Trevor Simeon. I know it was ugly, but the Saints defense can cure a lot of things for offenses. So I think, you know, it's Trevor Simeon's turn, week 10, to go up against New Orleans. If you don't like a quarterback matchup, or you're not liking your quarterback for whatever reason, Simeon could be a decent guy. Got three tight ends for you, Zach Ertz. It's looking like they're they're ready to get him more involved with the offense moving forward. So I think he needs to go back to being in the top 10 tight end discussion. So I think he needs to be on in more leagues. Lance Kendricks, this guy has been consistently involved in that offense as of late. You know, PPR leagues, he's been getting a lot of targets. I think Kendricks is definitely a guy that could have value down the stretch. And then CJ Fedorowicz for Houston. This guy has a lot of upside I think I mean 6'5 265 I mean he definitely has the size to be a solid tight end been getting very consistent targets Osweiler's been looking his way early and often they're coming off their bye or else he would have been picked up in more leagues he's only owning about 15 percent right now but I think he could be a guy that could definitely be a top 10 tight end down the stretch my pick up and play defense I'm going uh, going with Houston owning about 45 percent of leagues it's their chance to play Jacksonville Every other defense has been teeing off on Jacksonville, so I think Houston has a solid chance for some points week 10. So that's portion of the list. Click on the link in the description if you want to see the full list. Hopefully you guys are preparing for the playoffs, and good luck on the wire this week.